Our reading of the Gospel comes from Matthew 28, starting at verse 18. I'm going to invite you all to stand as if you were raising yourselves to hear the voice of God speaking directly to you through this word. Would you please stand? And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Are we close to Sarah? There she is. Oh, Sarah, lovely to see your smiling face this morning. And welcome to our service. In fact, I'd like to, to wel you. welcome you in um, with a reading from Philippians, if I may take this, and if you could accept it as a, as a reading to you from St. James, Masterton, New Zealand this morning, as we greet you in our Saviour's name. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank our God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making request for you with all joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, it's great to be with you all this morning, and it's been a real pleasure to be able to listen in. Um, as you were just saying earlier, I have been eavesdropping in a good way, and uh, gosh, you've got some great voices. What hearty lungs, I have to say. <laughs> Lovely um, to be able to have uh, the sound of your worship filling my office here. Uh, and welcome to my office this morning. To those of you who haven't met me before, uh, my name is Sarah, Sarah Dunn. I'm serving with Youth with a Mission, uh, one of those um, mission organizations that you've been sharing a bit about already this morning. Um, we are a, a, a global uh, movement of the young and young at heart. Um, our founder originally was founded by a man called uh, Lauren Cunningham and his, his wife Darlene and uh, he is well into his 80s now but he's still an active YWAMA and uh, he's actually been to, it's interesting to say this, every, every nation slash territory on earth. Um, he's, he's personally had it as a, a sense of needing to to set foot in all those places as part of this vision of particularly of releasing young people into waves of missions, um, not just from a few places, but believing that God has placed his word and wants to place his, his message in the heart of people in every place, to go to every place and reach out to those who have yet to hear. So when he was a young man, he had this image of of waves crashing over the globe. I was really encouraged to hear this uh, image earlier on of, of praying over the globe because it's a very important image for us and our, and our mission story as, as YWAM. In fact, for our, for our founder, it was actually a, um, a map on the wall, a, a picture of, of the map. And he had a, a, just a vision of waves and waves and the waves are going further and further and then just covering, covering the earth and it was people carrying their Christ's light, carrying the torch of, um, of this testimony of what 
what the hope of Jesus has done in their, in their hearts and, and carrying that from where they are to reach those in other places. So I'm just really blessed this morning to hear an encouragement. I'm encouraged in my spirit um, to, to think about the importance for all of us to be involved in mission. Um, and as some of the songs we've been singing, to be really reminding ourselves, I think the word, you know, and I agree with this, the word mundane was used earlier. Like it, it's not mundane, right? There's a, there's a fresh wonder. It, it, it's beautifully routine to come together on a Sunday um, and to see old friends, make new friends, sing songs that, that we just know by heart. That is a beautiful routine. It's a wonderful thing to be able to just be in the passion of doing that. And yet, at the same time, each breath that we have the blessing to breathe is a fresh wonder. And so um, I am encouraged again this morning about the importance of being on mission, of uh, wherever we are, not getting too comfortable in our routine, but looking for those opportunities to carry that, that light, that torch with us forward, whether it's to the supermarket or to Papua New Guinea, where, where I serve, or to... Africa or China or Auckland or wherever it is that um, that the Lord would ask us to to engage our hearts uh, in sharing His message. So I yeah I'm coming to you with a, a hashtag update um, from the work that that I've I'm part of here with YWAM in, in in Australia in particular. I'm actually coming to you from Townsville, um, where I'm in a, a team that is serving from a headquarters here up into our nearest neighbour. Uh, we're much closer to Port Moresby, uh, Papua New Guinea's capital, than we are to Brisbane. So we are, um, we're basically a, a community of people who are serving in North Queensland as well, in Indigenous communities and with the youth of our city, um, in the place where we have been planted. But we are actively uh, supporting, um, and many of us going back and forth in various expressions to serve in Papua New Guinea with our brothers and sisters up there. And I'm aware that many of you have been on the journey and as a church community, um, you know, I don't do this just by myself. I, I, I'm sent and, and supported in prayer and finances and advice and love and practical things <laughs> um, and just the encouragement of fellowship from many people around the world and including from, from the St. James community. And I just want to start by thanking you and saying it's a real privilege and a, a pleasure, albeit quite early in the morning over in this part of the, uh, of the world, but very privileged to be able to have my breakfast with you this morning um, and bring you some good reports from the field. And also, I know you are a church of prayer and that's definitely something that's come through. Again, I've been reminded as I've been listening to you in the last 20, 25 minutes, just the, um, the heart of worship and the heart of prayer and the heart of fellowship, those three things which I just constantly hear as a or I smell as a fragrance from St. James. Your fellowship together, your heart for worship, but also your intentionality around intercessory prayer. And I'd love to invite you to be praying uh, with us in a few things at the moment. So I'm going to flick, I'm going to do some screen sharing and pop some pictures up. Um, and I hope that the sound is. I hope I don't, don't get too carried away and you can, you can hear me okay. Um, and also that some of the pictures, um, you'll you get a, the, the image of some of what we're up to at the moment. But before I jump into too much of that, I'd also really like to acknowledge the situation for New Zealand as well and, and realise that our whole globe is, it's always been connected. Um, but when you use the word, add the word pandemic into the mix, um, we are connected in a, a different sort of way at the moment, um, each facing some common challenges, but that have some different clothing on them. And I'm really aware that New Zealand has its very own challenges at the moment, which are different to those in Australia, different to those in Papua New Guinea. Um, but they are some of those same themes of how do we call upon the Lord as our defender? How do we find our peace in uncertain times? How do we seek wisdom uh, in our personal decision-making and pray for our leaders and wisdom for, for communities? How do we find ourselves as peacemakers or as um, people who, who walk in humility and, and speak truth but are clothed in love? Some of those themes are very real in New Zealand right now. So I just want to acknowledge um, 
that some of the things I'm going to talk about on the Papua New Guinea in context, although I'm going to focus in there, I'm certainly very mindful of the context that you're all in. And as much as I ask and we ask for your prayers for us, I absolutely can look you in the eye and say that we are praying as a community for those who are standing with us as missionaries here and in Papua New Guinea. Um, we spend quite a amount of time also once a week, actually, we put into prayer groups and one of our groups is particularly to, to lift up home countries, our sending countries, our sending communities. So I really want you to realize that you're prayed for as well and your situation matters to God as much as that in far flung places. All right, well, I'm going to do, and thanks, a big shout out to Robert, who is just amazing on the technical side. I don't know, can we just give Rob, I know many of you are involved in this process as well, but can we just give a hand clap to God for the technology that he's allowed us to have in the pandemic to be connected? And also a big thanks to those who are helping it happen. Can we just do that? Just give a really big round of applause um, to God for technology and also to all those who've been helping with the technology today. I'm just so grateful. And I'm going to toggle my screen sharing to a window and it's going to be, <laughs> she says, let's just bring this window up. I've split my screen onto two, two pages and I realized that um, the technology doesn't like that. So I'm just going to un unsplit my screen and come back to vMix and screen sharing and window and this is how we're going to do it yes great okay well this is a uh, happy little picture from a, uh, a community in papua new guinea gosh png loves one of the strengths of this nation that brings brings to the nations we can learn from one another is just such a spirit of celebration and uh, you know, you put your glad rags on, whatever you have, you just pop that on. And even if you had to pick up some bits of plastic, which someone might look at as being rubbish, you could actually get those bits of colorful plastic from wrappers and put that into a head, headdress and just celebrate. This could be a, a celebration for, for, um, for a church celebration, perhaps. It could also be a celebration as God is honored for, for having teams of healthcare workers come to serve. And so this is something that we often see is, is communities getting together to really celebrate and bring what they have to, um, to get into joy, to, to enter into joy and gratitude uh, to God for the, for the day, for the breath, and often for teams being able to be sent um, of Papua New Guineans and of people from many nations coming together to help particularly in our, in our context, particularly I'd like to share about healthcare coming to really remote places and bringing, bringing comfort to people. So I know some of you are already very familiar with the story, so, but for those who may not be aware, just a quick reminder, um, we're operating a, 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 a mothership, a ship up in Papua New Guinea with small boats aboard, which allows us to get out to remote places and deploy those small boats to head out with land teams to really remote places that have very little access to transport, let alone access to things like healthcare, um, and also to, to support in terms of um, church support as well. Uh, so this is a quick picture, Very, I'll, I'll share some of the background to this picture shortly, but this is a very recent picture when our ship was ready to leave most recently, Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea's capital and head out to a remote area. And we were able to come alongside during this pandemic time, we've also been able to establish a, a land base. And you probably can't see it on your screen there, but just in, in the background, you can see there's a, some sky, a hill, there's some trees, and you can see a spy a little white cluster of buildings. And this is something really exciting that, that God's been opening up for us as a capacity to have a, a, a permanent home there in Port Moresby as a training center and as a logistical support base as we send our teams out to remote areas. I've already sort of jumped in though to sharing a bit about a map, which I have very clearly in my mind, but I'm aware that, you know, especially when I was back in the day in New Zealand, I didn't personally, personally, I didn't know the geography of the Pacific super well. So here's a very quick image here of our Pacific, of our Oceania area. 
and you can see New Zealand, we're on a little bit of an angle here, I think because this particular map is trying to be very truthful to latitudes and things. So New Zealand's having a little bit of a lay down here um, and Australia very large. Um, and, I, and I'm just wondering if there might be a bit of a delay in the slides. So if you could just, um, does someone have a microphone there? Are we gonna be, can someone speak into a microphone and say which slide you're, you're seeing at the moment? I'm there, Sarah, hear me? Yep, yep. Right, we're still on your first slide and we are not on full screen. Uh, you, uh, if I was on a Windows, I would, Plant, uh, use spacebar to go to the next slide. Can you do? Can yeah, you yeah. I'm on the next slide and I'm in full screen, so I think it might be a delay with the um, just a de uh, internet delay. So um, we're still on slide number one. Okay. Well, I might just stop sharing. There we go. Great. Back now let me just reshare where I was up to and we'll see if that helps one moment. We'll reshare. Don't quite know why that's All right, not. we've got the second slide. Are we on the third slide actually? Yes. Now are you in the presenter view? We're still not on the full view, no, we're still in the pre-view. It's not full screen yet. Okay. It's full screen on my screen. Well, I, I switched off and now I switched on again. So I'm, I am on full screen at my end. Um, so I'll just give it a moment. Otherwise I will change gear and um, Are you on a full screen yet? No, sorry, nothing's happening here. That's okay, that's okay. Um, okay, I don't know why that is. That's all right. Um, I might just make this a lot bigger. Oh, which I can't actually. Let me just make it a bit bigger. All right. Let's see if I can just perhaps maximize that. How about that? What are you seeing now? Yeah, we're still on a uh, the small screen. We are not we are not covering the whole thing yet. We're hmm. on your camera. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I've just switched it off because I've. I'll try for an, I'll just try a different route. Here we go. Oops, there we go. That's going to go to infinity until such point as I have. We've got quite a selection here. This is looking better. Yes, you're, it's uh, looking a lot better. Okay, we'll go with that one. Awesome. All right, so you can see Papua New Guinea. Well, hopefully you can. Can you see my cursor at all doing a little jance around up the top? Yes, that's work. Yes, we see that. Yep, so this is Papua New Guinea. For those of you who may not be aware, very close, just off, the, just off the tip. This is called Cape York in Australia. This is, a, this is far north Queensland. So Townsville is a few bumps down. You might be aware of Cairns. Probably more Kiwis are aware of Cairns. So Cairns is just below this next bump of Australia. Um, and Townsville is a bit further down here. Um, so the state of Queensland and Cape York, this is the Torres Strait. And I'm going to share with you a bit more about the Torres Strait shortly because it's a place we've been particularly asked to serve and we've really seen God move mountains and, and, and open some uncharted waters for us to be working here on the border with Indonesia, um, the Torres Strait, which technically has islands that are, I think, less than four kilometres technically uh, of Australia, four kilometres between the mainland of Papua New Guinea. And, and some of these islands up here. So these two nations, Australia and Papua New Guinea, are intimately in, in, interwoven, if you like, up around this border area. Okay, but, okay, now this image, I'm aware, is quite light. So you've got such a beautiful light church that I'm not sure it will show particularly well. But you can see some, um, now I'm just gonna try, I have changed to presenter view. Is that on presenter view at the moment? That's for you? better now. You've got a full screen now. 
Great. Okay. Um, so you can see lots of little dots here. You can probably see a little line along here. This is the uh, the border between Papua New officially between Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. So you may have heard of uh, West Papua or Papua Province. Those are the provinces of Indonesia, which are literally it's just some of the same people group, but uh, across this border here between Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. There's some really large refugee camps uh, all along this border area uh, and a lot of fluid, fluid human uh, travel around here. Um, and also down here with Australia, which you can imagine, we're not going to have a large political discussion right now, but you can imagine there's quite a bit of, um, of um, strategic importance in this area and also uh, not a small number of, of military involvement bits and pieces on all the different sides stationed in this area. Uh, so the little dots I'm showing you, uh, I'm going to talk in a couple of slides about some of the places We've been able to serve during the pandemic and particularly this year where we really feel God's asked us to roll up our sleeves and we've been able to to keep very active although in some areas things seem to have stopped but in other areas they've really picked up gear so these dots are just demonstrating some of the spread across this province called western province up in an area called lake murray up the top here all sorts of river riverways up here the bamu the aramia um, rivers but these Green and red dots are some of the areas in the Torres Strait where we've been active. The green ones have been very active in the last few weeks. The red ones are areas where we are believing to get to before Christmas. So the year is not done yet. There might be Christmas trees being sold in Bunnings and Mitre 10, but there is, the year is yet young as far as some of these goals, and we really believe to press in and get to these red areas shortly. But it's been a journey. As some of you will, will recall, and I, I, I am led to believe you have been praying with us on this topic. So thank you for this earlier in the year. You might remember that we had, we sustained, we had to do a dry dock, which is an important thing to keep our ship in, in good working order. But unfortunately, there was some damage sustained during that. Um, won't go into the detail, but it was, it was quite, at the time, it, it felt quite catastrophic, but we really believe that God didn't bring us this far to, uh, to you know, overcome insurances and, and vaccine access and, and border crossings and exemptions and clearances to get to where we were to just be stuck in a dry dock. So what was supposed to be a two-week dry dock period became a four-month dry dock period for, these, for this amazing team. Um, we just saw God just move mountains to get special aluminium um, plating across the customs situation uh, up into Papua New Guinea. You, you'll, you'll be aware of the pandemics meant that supply chains globally are very stressed, including just getting cargo ships all around. So being able to get the specialized equipment, the volume of aluminium for the marine that we needed to get that cleared into, across into the country, then to get specific welding people who had the maritime qualifications um, with our certifiers in London to be able to come and and do the do the welding and it just it was a Herculean effort and these guys did an incredible job men and women aboard the ship over it ended up being a, a four month period and this was just toward the end where things were almost ready to slip back into the water and that's why that picture that I showed you a bit earlier on of the of the ship just outside out Port Moresby, that was the day that we actually got back in, back into the water and able to get our engines going and start underway. And it was just such a time of celebration after so many months of continuing to persevere and have so many people with us on that journey in prayer. So thank you for helping us keep morale strong. And also, we honestly needed to see many mountains moved to move that forward. There's other, other ships that are just still stuck right at this time. And to be able to see our ship sustain damage and get fixed and get back in the water is something that we never want to forget, <laughs> thanking God for. But meanwhile, as our teams were working to get that ship back in the water and back to support us to get to more remote places in a greater way, we were able to send land-based teams. Many of you would have heard of a group called Mission Aviation Fellowship, and they're very active in Papua New Guinea, and we work closely with MAF. And so we were able to have teams of health workers head out 
uh, to small airstrips uh, and, and do COVID awareness, COVID vaccinations, particularly focusing as well on mother and child health, because as the pandemic crushes an already weak health system, uh, women and children in terms of their basic health care are often well, already challenged, but even more challenged. So these teams were able to work with um, mother and child health, COVID awareness, providing COVID vaccinations to those who are keen for that, and basically able to, to bring, bring hope to some areas that were very much continue to be very much struggling in the remote, remote parts of Papua New Guinea. So meanwhile, while we saw mountains moved to continue to get the ship back in, back in order, we continued to see other mountains moved, to see teams connecting, often just at the right time, just at the time people had been you know, going through a challenge or had been praying for some fresh supplies to come. And, and the team, unbeknownst to them, would, would see those dots connect and just know that we have a supernatural God who is over all of these circumstances. And even though we can't always see the solutions, as we just wake up in the morning and take one step after the next, we see him connecting the dots so beautifully. So I hope you're seeing there a picture of a team on a, uh, just one example of a team on a, uh, a pathway heading, heading to a village. Because I'm now switching to a clinic picture for you. Um, I hope you're seeing a, a wooden hut um, and some of our team there um, working to, to do testing and draw up medications and assess people. Um, who are coming. Can you see that? Can you see that well? All good, thank you. It's all good. Yeah. Well. Great, okay. Um, and other teams, when we were able to get the ship back out, they've been able to go via, via small boats like this one. And you can see they really pack that up and, and, and get going. Um, sometimes spending quite a few hours on the water to get to where they need to get to. You can see, probably see a mix of faces there. We're really privileged to be working with people from all around the world. Kiwis and Aussies make up a good number, but also Germans, Canadians, people from the US, also from Pacific Island nations, um, and numbers of Papua New Guineans. Quite a few Europeans as well, others coming from uh, Scandinavia. We've got a few Norwegians aboard, uh, working what we say, wakbung one time in the local language, working together uh, with PNG people as well, called into the mix. And sometimes you can imagine it's nice and sandy and tropical. Other times um, we're working in some estuarine areas or actually river delta areas. And I just love, it's just, I think it's very beautiful, but also it's very muddy. Uh, and so you can see an image here, I hope, of, of a team uh, working together to uh, do the task of, of getting mobile clinic uh, out and getting it set up in a hut, um, navigating tidal issues and also some of that mud to get to where they need to get to. Uh, I'm just aware of the time and we had a little bit of a delay earlier on. Can someone just let me know how many, just so I can time some of the stories, uh, just about how much longer do we have together this morning? As much, we had at least another 20 minutes as one report. Okay, okay, great. Well, I would love to, um, yeah, share the message, uh, sh share the story of, of this, um, these people you see in the picture, actually. So I'd shared about working in team. And although we have people you know, sent from non Papua New Guinea nations to PNG, we also believe that we're in mission wherever we are and that Papua New Guineans are called to mission as well. And so as part of that, we have training, training programs where young Papua New Guineans can participate um, in uh, understanding their, their faith more, um, where they, where they uh, profess to, to, to want to walk with Jesus and to, to be in missions and uh, understand um, some of their skill sets, build out some of their practical skill sets. Many young Papua New Guineans are very keen, and there's a real sense of prophecy in the nation to be, to be well equipped to go into the harder to reach parts of the world. Papua New Guineans are joyful and robust and they know how to uh, carry themselves um, when there's resources, but also how to, how to make it happen where there aren't the resources. And so they're right on the border there with um, Southeast Asia and up 
up into um, other parts of, of Asia. And I'm not sure quite of the, we do need to be a bit sensitive when we're using um, calling like this, but there really is a strong call. We already have a number of Papua New Guineans based and serving in nations throughout Asia. Um, and some places where um, it's for their safety reasons, we won't be necessarily saying exactly where they're working, but it's amazing to, as part of our mission, to be to be serving and sh sharing the, the, the hope and the care of Jesus, but also sharing this word that, that God wants to use people from all nations to, to serve in missions and um, to, to, to release a new wave of people to continue to reach the, the last place, the least place, the place that has yet heard, um, and mobilizing a wave of young Papua New Guineans uh, to be released into missions. So you see a couple of blokes in the screen behind. There are actually two young men who've been part of a, a rural healthcare training program. So they are, they are just young school graduates who've been able to go through a basic health volunteer program. And they've been able to actually get a qualification in, in first aid and also advanced first aid. And you might think, you know, obviously, even in New Zealand, I think it's quite fun as a young person to be able to say you've got your first aid certificate. But I, I think we'd all recognise that it's, it's fairly well available. You can probably have, you know, St. John's or someone will be running a, a first aid course somewhere near you. Um, but that's not quite so, it's, it's very much not that available in PNG. So it's a fantastic entry level qualification um, alongside some of the Bible training and personal, personal discipleship training to be able to get these young men and women involved in, um, in some basic healthcare skills, helps them to be able to have practical things which they can do to serve in their nation right now, and also to have those skills uh, as they consider going to serve in other nations. But in the foreground, you see the other, the other side of that, which is working alongside Papua New Guineans who are called into what we call the spheres. So Papua New Guineans, in this case, this is a, a nursing officer who's been serving in Papua New Guinea, but she doesn't really have the resources to head out from the urban area, um, but her skills are desperately needed in the rural area. So working with the local health leaders, they've said, yes, could you please take within your YWAM team, our local health workers, and work together to reach out to rural communities. So this is one of, actually, honestly, a relatively small number of PNG health workers who have been vaccinated against COVID and it's safe to, for us to take them, you know, for their own safety and, and the workplace health and safety out into areas which are having pandemic community transmission. And she's one of these ones who's just given her whole heart to just get up early, work late, continue working with the teams to be part of being able to use her skills to serve people and to understand how her faith in Jesus can be expressed in a practical way uh, in her community. This is another example of training. I'm going to flick one forward and this is a, a nurse from Christchurch on um, team with us. Her name's Gemma. She actually was working in Wellington, uh, I think in intensive care there prior. She's serving now with us. She's actually in hotel quarantine right now, but she's um, been serving for many months now up in Papua New Guinea. And this is a picture of her doing training. We were able to advocate to transport in some personal protective equipment, which wasn't available in this area. And we arrived and we started to do some testing and realized that there was quite a lot of TB coming across the board. Uh, sorry, TB, yes, um, and malaria, yes, but also COVID was coming across from Indonesia, which had a major outbreak and was starting to spill through those camps and into this border area. And there just was a critical shortage of PPE. So it was amazing to see that PPE arrive. That's a whole nother story, but we were able to see that, advocate for that to come. But then of course it needs training. So here's Gemma doing training. Um, and here's the, <laughs> the photo afterwards. Hope you can see these uh, men and women all very excited to be donned in their, uh, their N95 masks and their uh, protective gears there um, and their goggles as they are ready to, to serve patients in their area. Okay, I'm just gonna stop screen sharing for a moment. <laughs> 
just so you can get a break from seeing photos and hearing a voice and seeing my face, I hope, but we're just going to see if that's, there we go. Yeah, so, so far what I've shared is basically, oh, thank you to you for being with us on the journey, uh, a, um, an update on how we've been going with some of these logistical things we've faced this year and being able to see the ship back in the water, it's a huge deal, but also what we've been able to see God lead us in, in terms of land-based teams, um, and now seeing the ship back, being able to just multiply the geographic engagement. One of the things we've really been grappling with, and you might ask, how is this mission as well? So one thing we really believe is that when we go into, that faith without works is deceased. So there's really an element of people having heard a lot of talk about Jesus, but when they are in abject poverty, or just not having any access to healthcare and being, in this case, it gets next level worse because then a pandemic comes, communities just can feel incredibly isolated, do feel isolated. I'm wondering, you know, God, we can trust you in all circumstances, but what does it look like practically to get help? And uh, so we really feel very compelled as the body of Christ globally and mobilizing within Papua New Guinea as well, to reach out to some of these places. Um, some of them have heard the gospel. Some of them have heard perhaps a bit of a warped version of it because they just haven't had a chance to receive uh, extra teaching in their isolated area. So the real thrust we've had is a desire to not let COVID stop us reaching out with essential healthcare but also with a message um, that God has not forgotten. He definitely hasn't forgotten. And um, his compassion comes in many ways, but it comes through people being willing to go, to be sent, to, to, to reach out, and to come in a really tangible way to serve. One of the things we also found ourselves engaged in, though, is you can, you can you'll be aware it's a there's, a mate, there's many players in the response at the moment across um, the globe, but also Papua New Guinea's nonetheless. So you've got many different nations and their governments and um, other aid organisations, which are all well-intended. Um, but one of the things people have been encountering is a lot of fear around some... Um, how do I say this politely, some use of the Bible by some, on some social media platforms, which has somehow infiltrated some areas and given people some big fears that, for instance, if you get COVID, then you are basically going to hell, or that if you have a vaccine, then you are also damned. Uh, and so there's some, there's some very strong statements out there which if people wish to believe them, that is absolutely their free choice. But I have a belief, and I'm sure many of us share a belief, that our God is a God of love. And he, I, I, have, I absolutely believe that he is not trying to condemn Papua New Guinea. He's not trying to ostracize. He actually reached down and touched people, say with leprosy back in the day. That was a very fearful thing. Our Jesus was one who would reach out and touch that. Not only touch it, he would heal it. <laughs> but he was not afraid of outcastness. He would take in tax collectors, Zacchaeus. You know, Mary Magdalene, he, he would connect with, he was known, he was actually criticized for being one who sat and was a friend of sinners. So we, we know that our God is not one who, this, this fear, this sense of uh, rejection from God and that the Christian God is here to reject and... Um, and on the flip side, the strange, the strange idea that somehow if you're vaccinated, that's going to send you to hell as well. It's just a very, I just find it really tragic. I even find it a bit hard to talk about because it's just a, such the antithesis. It's the opposite, I think, of the message of reconciliation that our God came. We're coming near Christmas. We know that our God came to be in a human fully human form in a baby in a feeding trough and then you know die for us, overcome death, be resurrected, make a recon make a way for reconciliation, not come to find ways to separate us from himself. We know that that's not our faith. So suffice it to say, 
there's been a lot of challenges in PNG. PNG is currently not only having a huge, you know, mass burials and morgues overflowing, blah, 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 but also, not blah, 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 but you know what I say, it's challenging, but also has a, about 2% or perhaps even a less than 2% vaccination rate, but also lacks critical oxygen supplies. I mean, you just can't get help in some of these places. So the best thing that can be done, one of the best things, is to provide people information about vaccination and vaccination if they would like to be, because it can genuinely provide protection, particularly from the severe forms of COVID for which there's no hospital locally to help. So you can imagine that a number of government and other non-faith-based um, helpers have come in and tried to share, but it's been very difficult and sometimes they've been chased away. And sometimes by people who purport to be church leaders. So it's been a really important um, role for us to be peacemakers and to be able to say, hey, we want to be in humility. We want to be honoring everyone's choice to make their own informed choices. But we would really love to open a dialogue. Let's open the word of God together. And let's have a dialogue around, let's step away from COVID for a moment and let's recount the story of the gospel, the good news. And coming down to not this fear, not this thing that I think some forces have wanted to just really taint this message with fear, but we're wanting to bring this back to who is a loving Father God. Let's just agree around that. And as a separate conversation, can we help answer some questions um, if you do have questions about vaccine? Um, and that's actually been a remarkable success. And we've had lots of non-Christians say to us, wow, you guys seem to have a way of just, this is a, it's a very strange spiritual environment, but you seem to have a way of honoring processes, but also having prayerful conversations with people. And we're seeing whole villages decide that they want to protect themselves and their children with childhood vaccinations and access to COVID vaccine now, whereas before it was just very challenging, you know, violence, suffering, and this very strange rhetoric, which non-Christians aid workers were looking in and saying, oh dear, like it's the church that's the problem. I'm like, well, you know, we're very willing to hear many perspectives, but most of all, we want to tell you about a Jesus that loves all people and that wants to come and um, take fear away. And your vaccination choice isn't your salvation, but we would really love in the, in the light of his hope um, and his, the peace he brings in your heart, just to make a peaceful environment where people can be allowed to make their choices and be at peace with one another and also feel that they have received their peace with God, regardless of sick COVID coming and bringing a lot of suffering and fear into the community. So I don't know if I'm communicating that well, but I think you I think you can probably connect the dots enough, even in some of the situation in New Zealand, but, but in a place like Papua New Guinea, where honestly, I think New Zealand may have, I think last I saw you may have had 39 um, New Zealanders pass away from COVID. Um, and I'm really sad to hear that. I also can tell you that the report from Papua New Guinea from the official stats that had got in, and not many of them actually get into the official office in Port Moresby, but there was 39 just on Friday that had passed away, but that's not, it'd be, it'd be the hundreds actually, because the paperwork hasn't come back in yet. You can understand that in the context of so much fear and suffering, frankly, being able to have people um, come and share that we have a God that's not against us, that we have a God of reconciliation and love and hope uh, is a very, important refreshing message uh, alongside being able to do the hard yards of responding to the outbreak practically with healthcare services. I'm going to stop there because I think there might well be some questions but I'm just going to move to a couple more pictures. I, I would love to, I would actually like to leave some room for questions because I, I'm aware that although the two contexts in New Zealand and PNG have some similarities they have some really important differences as well and how this impacts on our work as missional people um, expressing that love and peace of God um, needs to be really highly contextualized. It's quite different in Masterton from how it might be even in a place like Auckland and it might be, it's very different 
Auckland to Townsville, and it's different again, Townsville to Port Moresby. And it's different again from Port Moresby to a village at the Bamu River. <laughs> um, so I'd love to take some time for any questions that might be burning out there. But just before I go there, I would like to show you a couple of other updates on this jetty, on this property in Port Moresby that I was telling you about, that we, is there something else exciting that God's opened up this year? Um, and I'm going to see if I can share that. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, I was going to share the jetty, but just before I get to the jetty, this is a very colorful picture. I hope you can see a lot of Crayola pictures on the screen. We have a map. Part of what we've seen. We have a map. Yep. What we, a map? Okay. We um, a map on screen. A map. Hmm. You, we have seen this one before. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I think this is again. I think this. Uh, now, now we've got some different stuff. What are you seeing now? Looks like a doctor's x ray to me. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. So, some of the places that we've really felt stirred to go to and been called to go to, particularly some of those border areas Australia, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, that sort of area, Torres Strait, don't actually have chart, maritime charts. So, it's, it's impossible for our teams to, well, it's very hard for our teams to get there. But we have been able to see a um, new hydrographic survey, 3D hydrographic survey equipment come to pass. And that has literally just been installed in the last six weeks. And within the first week, we were able to do uh, a survey 70 nautical miles from Daru Island, halfway along to that border in the Torres Strait, the border with Indonesia. And that's allowed us to engage with communities that otherwise we would not have been able to reach. And so it's just, it's a bit of technical detail, but my goodness, it's a huge practical part of being able to overcome isolation and take hope and um, yeah, this, this gospel message and, and, and healthcare to areas which otherwise were very, very difficult to access. So I really want to put this picture up again. It's just one of those things that we felt like, God, you're calling us there, but how on earth are we going to get there? We could get the ship back in the water. That would be miracle enough, but we need to do some, there needs to be some surveying. And this is actually New Zealand equipment, which is really world leading and allows rapid survey um, at the level of detail we need to safely navigate the water. Um, are you seeing our captain on the bridge now? No, we're still ongoing capacity to respond. Oh, now there's a bridge, okay. now we're right. Yes. Oh, now there's the bridge. Okay, it's just a little bit too late. Okay. Can you see our captain? So this is our captain standing on the bridge, and you can see he's got this equipment, and it, as the teams are out, it's the boats are doing survey, and it's filling out the screen in front of him. Well, I particularly love this picture. You may not be able to see it, but through one of these windows on the bridge, <laughs> you can actually see a couple of teams in boats who are heading out. So you're, you're, you're standing on the bridge right now um, with our captain, Captain Jeremy Shearer. He's a man, you, if you can lift him up in prayer, he's a man who's just carrying so much responsibility, but really has a passion in his heart to reach people. So, and out the window, you're looking at healthcare teams. So we're heading out um, to reach remote areas. I just love this image as it's a demonstration of how far we've come to be in the water, to have the survey equipment and to have those teams able to be equipped and heading out. But I want to show you the jetty quickly. Now I've gone space bar forward on my screen. Robert, do we have a picture of, of uh, the jetty? No, we're still looking at the man. No, the okay. Yeah. I'm just going to come Here back we go. down. Uh, the Here we it's, go. Right. The jetty. Okay. Screen. It's not full screen, but uh, we've got the jetty. Is it full screen now? No, it's not full screen. Okay. Well, um. But we okay. Have... We'll just go ahead. It's. it's Yep. So the building you can see just in front, uh, the white, you've seen some pictures, you might, you might not remember, it was a while ago, but I showed you some pictures numbers of months ago of a graffiti riddled building, <laughs> which had broken windows and everything. 
Um, now this building has come a long way um, through the local village and some teams have been able to be in country up, up dating and, and working on renovating this with their hands. Um, and this is a training location. You can probably see now, I hope, um, some of the teams there getting air conditioning in to make it a bit more tolerable. And you can probably see some um, black tarpaulin type stuff that's across window gaps because vandals have come and, and ripped the building free of all its windows. So we've managed to get some screening in there now. It's, it's even looking better. When we still have phone calls with this team who are doing training and things inside the building, we have this beautiful bird song <laughs> because the birds have made nests all the top of it. So next step Sweet. is to try and lovingly evict the, evict, the, um, evict the birds. But we do have a Bible training school in there right now. And uh, these are the discipleship training, training school students who are some of the ones I shared about earlier on, who have a heart to be trained for missions and to be sent, particularly into parts of Southeast Asia and into parts of PNG who haven't heard yet. I hope you're seeing a picture of their faces um, outside the jetty building. Are you seeing that at the moment? A group of people together. Yeah, still not full screen, yep. but yes. No, I just don't think full screen's coming across for some reason. Um, so you're seeing, yeah, you're seeing the um, those young people there. And yeah, the I'm going to, yep, the building. Something, something else. And now... Before I get off my own face, I'm going to show you, I wish this was full screen, but it's not. These are our boards. This is where we write up in our office. I'm looking at it right now. We decided that because we had so many battles in front of us, we were going to pray one battle at a time and we were going to write it on a whiteboard in our office every time one of those giants fell. And so this was the first one we started with in November, December last year, and it went through into January, uh, January, February, March, as we were just believing for exemptions to even leave Australia, exemptions to enter, enter to cross the international border in the state of emergency. You can imagine all the, the visas, all the things we had to get. And then it filled up, thank God. And so we ended up having to have Victory Board 2.0. And so we continue to face things like we need the first one here is we need the aluminium customs clearance, God. And so we received aluminium customs clearance. And then we needed an electrical power connection that was proving very difficult. So then we got this the next one is the PNG power electrical connection. So this board, you get the point, this board just was getting filled up as we lifted things to the Lord and he, he, he made it happen ahead of us. And now we're on to board 3.0, and you can see my colleague, close colleague Nathan, who sits on the desk next to me. This is our board, writing it up last week. Um, we were able to deliver last in the last week and a bit, we were able to work with a community that had previously been running away from health workers. They've come together. Um, we've been able to help some small children who are very sick with TB. There's a malaria outbreak out there. We've been able to get the childhood immunizations happening and more than a thousand adults came forward for COVID vaccination. So that was all just in the last 10 days. And we're really starting to see the momentum rise. So we are gonna to continue to believe to see this board filled up as we face obstacles, but see God go ahead of us. And this is our most recent obstacle, which I'm, when I stop screen sharing, I'm going to um, ask, take some questions and also invite some prayer for some very specific things. But keep an eye on this. I'm going to talk about something called a an anchor windlass. Anchor windlass. Um, if you can see that there, there is an anchor chain in the middle of the picture. Um, and it, you can imagine if anchors go down and up, that's great, but they're very heavy and they need to be wound around some special anchor housing. And that anchor windlass has failed for us in the last week. And we are actually literally today believing we're going to be receiving an urgent part up from Melbourne into Port Moresby for the engineers to attach. And we believe to be back up the river. We're hoping to back up the river tomorrow. But that's that's really going to be pretty miraculous to see that happen. But we know that there's so much more to be done this year. And we, we know that we don't need to be stopped by an anchor windless failure, that mountains can continue to move. And this is the one that we are. It's not yet on our board, but we believe that we're believing that come tomorrow we'll be able to 
come into the office and write on the board another victory as our anchor wingless gets repaired. Thank you. Sarah. Okay, so I'm, I'm sorry that that wasn't on full screen and I'm not sure why, but we're just going to keep going. And I hope that, and I also hope that I was going to go back and forth a bit more so you could see my face, but thank you for bearing with having a screen and just talking through a microphone because I know that's not always the most um, engaging way. Um, yeah, but now that I'm back on full screen, I'm just going to leave it here. And I'd love to see if there are any quick questions people might want to ask me live or I'm willing to take also if you wanted to gather questions. Um, I'm really willing to have some conversations. Perhaps I could respond via an email or something if the church had um, specific questions about the number of things I've been talking about in our environment in PNG at the moment. Um, so I'll just quickly flick back, see if there's any key questions now, or if you prefer, I can take some questions afterwards. Um, and then I would like to introduce just a couple of prayer points um, to close. Would Les like to go to the lectern? Go to the lectern, please, and take over there. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sarah. And we'll ask, anybody got questions at this point? Any specific question that uh, something you want clarified regarding what's going on in uh, PNG, how are they coping with this or that? We've got a mo mobile microphone, have we? Fantastic. You guys are more onto it than I am this morning about the sounds. Yes, we've got a question. Great. Right, Sarah, I don't know whether you heard that, uh, but how do you get, or how do you keep the, uh, say, the Pfizer vaccine, or indeed the other one, I can't, AstraZeneca? Zeneca, yeah. How do you keep it cool when you're going, uh, going bush? That's a great question. Uh, yeah, so in Papua New Guinea, the two um, vaccines that are authorised are AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. Uh, and they both can be kept at the um, temperature that the childhood vaccines are kept at. So it's a standard fridge temp. Um, but that's not easy. So yeah, cold chain is a big deal. So we have freezers aboard the ship um, and ice packs and special, I'm going to call them eskies, but that's pretty Australian, um, chili bins, um, which, so that the vaccines basically pack into chili bins with these cold packs. But you can imagine it's, it's, it's a, there are thermometers and there are tracking sheets and it's quite the journey. Um, it's a key competency for the, for the clinic leaders um, to be able to track that cold chain right from the cold store in Port Moresby onto our bulk storage and then into the day-to-day -day uh, chili bins that then go into the clinic space. And then for those land teams, they have to um, find generators uh, and fuel uh, to run a generator to run mobile ice making machines um, to keep those cool boxes going when they are remote from a from a fridge or freezer. So it's such an interesting logistical question and a lot of people, it's, been a, it's, their, it's their job really, uh, is to manage the cold chain expertly because, and that's not new for COVID. The good thing is those two vaccines are at the same temperature as the childhood vaccines. So we've been able to dovetail and twin those two processes together, um, obviously keeping uh, records of which drug is which drug, uh, but the cold chain process can be maintained across both. Any other questions? Thank you, that was very clear. It's a good question. No more questions at this point, Sarah, so perhaps uh, those prayer points that you would like to share with us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm just going <laughs> to... Remind myself of them by going to my 
slide as well. So I've briefly introduced firstly this the windless. Uh, so yeah, I've already said that that's a, a challenge that we face unexpectedly. I want to just we want to testify when we when we pray, we also pray with thanksgiving. And so it was just incredible. After two years, we were able to get back to the Bamu River last week and the week before, um, and the windless was working. And the communities that had been really fearful, um, we were able. We've just got a long-term relationship there, and also with with small like house churches or churches along some of the villages so we were able to not only see a great health outcome but but really see that happen efficiently in 16 villages in six days that was amazing and then we were to pick up anchor and travel overnight to another river and our anchor windless we pulled up anchor because if we hadn't been able to pull up anchor that would have been an absolute that would have been really 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 hard because you'd be stuck pretty much we were able to pull up anchor <laughs> after an amazing week, which has been a real encouragement to many, many partners and, and, and to the local health leaders. But that was when it broke. So we weren't able to put it down again, um, which we want to thank God for his grace and the timing of that, because it meant that we were able to have at least anchor up and sail all the way back to Port Moresby and, and be able to get that delivery from Australia, which we hope will arrive today. Um, but it meant that we weren't, because of the timing, we weren't stuck, stuck, and had also been able to have such an incredible week. If that had happened on our, the beginning of our week, it would have just been really heartbreaking, honestly, because those communities have been waiting a very, very, very long time for help. Um, so we're thankful to God that we trust he continues to be a step ahead of us, but we do need to see that anchor mechanism fixed. We need, we need it to be fixed today, and we're, ask, we're believing for a smooth, quick, safe sale back to be able to start clinics in another area, which also has not had care for a long time uh, this week coming. So our urgent prayer need is, yep, let's continue to thank God for his hand of providence upon even, okay, people were saying to us, well, look, the windless part you need, that might be often the parts are in Germany. Germans are great at engineering. So the part, probably in Germany, you probably won't be able to get it. But we were able, very surprisingly, according to the manufacturer, to find exactly the right part in Melbourne, just sitting on the shelf in a marine machinery place. And then they were able to put it as a medical emergency onto DHL, who were able to get it from Melbourne to Brisbane very quickly, which is quite challenging at the moment. And then from Brisbane up to Port Moresby today. So continuing to be very grateful, but recognize we need to be vigilant in prayer to see this windless process completed and to be able to continue what we want to do in the next three or four weeks. Other areas for prayer, uh, just for our team, honestly, our PNG team and our other team members are grieving a lot at the moment. Um, honestly, every day we have another person who loses a family member, a brother, a sister, a mother, father, grandparent to COVID or to other diseases that they weren't able to get help for because the health system has shut down, basically, in lots of areas. And whilst we have a God who is with us and gives us hope, he also is a God who recognises our tears and asks us to mourn with those who mourn. Uh, and so continuing to support one another as team when there's so much grief personally in team, but keep going. Keep going because we know that our hope and our, our anchor holds, even though we are wanting to walk sensitively through grief journeys with many different team members. That's a real area we would love your prayer for comfort. <clears throat> Another area is particularly Third one was just going to be for a break in this fear. We are seeing breakthrough in that area, um, but continue to recognize that there is a huge amount of concern and um, conspiracy theories and all sorts of things which are needing discussion. Um, but the main thing we really wanted people to realize is that the spirit of fear doesn't need to take hold. No matter what people's opinions are, we was, fear needs to let go um, of communities' hearts. And we don't want fear to come into our hearts. So we just want to, we need to continue to ask God to guard our hearts, that we would have love and wisdom, know when to shut our mouths, when to open our mouths. But that fear would not have a place either in our hearts, but also as we pray that and to see that into the communities, that fear would not have a place there. And the fourth point I'd like to raise for your prayer is that there was one village, one 
river we weren't able to get to. It's called the Gama. It's next door to the Bamu. And they are next level remote, like more remote again. We really, really wanted to go there. We've been going there in previous years, but we weren't able to because of the security situation. There's tribal fighting happening, and it's just really tragic to see all the suffering going on, but on the other side, tribal fights come up and people are losing life from tribal fight, and the local authorities said that we, we weren't able to go there. So we were able to get close enough to get the intel, and we are not too far away to pray. So we're really calling for prayer for the Gama, that there would be peace and that tribal fighting would stop, that there'd be no more loss of life um, and that people wouldn't continue to be neglected from services because the security situation means that they can't get help. So peace for the Gama River is my other prayer. Thank you, Sarah. <clears throat> I'll let Barry take over now. Right here. Thank, Sarah, th thank you so much um, for what you've shared with us today. And it's been a real blessing being here, listening in detail to the work you're doing up there in New Guinea and also based in Townsville. <clears throat> if there's no vaccine available, and I'm sure there is, your smile would be a great cure for everybody. Thank you for being so <laughs> natural and sharing with us from your heart. We appreciate that immensely. And uh, we assure you of our support and of our prayer. So we'd like you to remain with us if that's possible and we're going to, in a few moments, we're going to stand and we're going to sing a hymn during which there's going to be a special offering uh, for Sarah. We invite you to share in that today, of course, and if you're unable to, remember the request. There is a number you can, um, an online number you can pay into or a promise. So let's stand and sing that great hymn and can it be, and then we will uh, conclude with prayer for Sarah and for our, uh, ourselves today. So let us stand and sing. Thank you, Sarah. I'm feeling I'm going to have to take you off the screen to put words up there so that they can sing. But hey, <laughs> good to see good you. you. We'll catch up yes. later. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Mm. <laughs>
great faith, and uh, I'm sure you found it very, very inspiring. Just want to acknowledge uh, Sarah's uncle and auntie here this morning. Love you to have you with us. Been a great family time together, and uh, I'm sure you've all been deeply blessed and hopefully challenged. Let's just give thanks for the offering, then we'll join hands and we will have our benediction. Our Father, we just thank you for your blessings, which to us are numerous. We stand in awe at times of how you bless, and we pray for those who have given up so much to go to the four corners of the earth to proclaim the wonderful message of Jesus Christ, the gospel of salvation. And today we just zero in on Sarah. We thank you for her for her obedience, for her giftings, for her skills. And we pray that by your spirit, you will lead her into perhaps places yet unknown to her, opportunities she has never had before. But we pray for your protection at all times. We pray for the continuous empowering of your Holy Spirit at all times. And we pray that her every need will be met according to your riches in glory. Bless those who work with her and around her, we pray, and we commend to you the work of the Lord through YWAM, that great mission. May it continue to strive and to know your blessing. Hear our prayer as we offer it to you in that name which is above every name, the name which one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of God our Father. Amen.